Hey, it's Sarah with House Copper. I am excited today on this beautiful fall day to do um, a patch. We're gonna talk about and do um, an experiment. I've never done this before, so let's hope it works. Um, but it is um, uh, an old piece that is extremely brittle and extremely thin. So there are times when brazing copper makes perfect sense when you want to fix a hole that um, is there. Um, that's the gold kind of bronze that you see with cramp seams, the little jagged teeth seams. Um, and also when there's um, like a hole in copper and it's been properly repaired, it is brazed shut, not, um, not shut with just like a tin solder. So brazing is a lot more permanent. Now, um, some pieces, if you try to braze them, the temperature that you need in order to braze the holes is so hot um, to melt um, your soldering stick, your bronze soldering stick, that you actually end up just burning a bigger and bigger and bigger hole in your piece as opposed to fixing it, so you make it way worse. So when that kind of piece shows up, I always try and figure out a way to patch it. In this particular case, um, a patch on the bottom um, is gonna be what we do because it's on the very base, which is a very common place for holes to happen in old copper, um, you know, along either the radius of the um, outside diameter or along the very, very bottom. This piece, it's on the very, very bottom. Now, I could put a patch um, on the inside where the food is gonna go, but that's gonna create problems really quick with cleaning and use. So instead, I'm going to patch it from the bottom and then um, smooth out the tin on the inside. So the patch is actually gonna go on the base. Um, and it's kind of like a last ditch effort on a piece this brittle and this thin um, to make it usable. Otherwise, it's just kind of decorative and, and or has to go in the trash, which we never wanna do with copper. So without further ado, here we go on an attempt to uh, exterior patch an extremely old piece of copper. Okay, here is the piece. It's been tinned already because I um, definitely wanted to get as much new tin inside as possible before I do this procedure because if I were to tin after I do this procedure, the tin patch that I'm gonna put on now would fall off. So this is like the very end stage after all the rest of the restoration short of polishing has been done. So once this process is done, then I will go and I will do the buffing wheel and a hand polish and get this as uh, shiny as an old piece like this will let me. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna show you what the uh, inside and outside look like for this. And, we'll, um, and then we're gonna start um, on the very next step, which is to cut a patch. So as you can see, here's the damage. Um, from the inside, it's not horrible, but it actually does go through. And you can't, this is uh, also bellied out. Part of that is the make. It's just made this way. It's, and, and plus time use and heat has made all the copper crystals expand. So it kind of is bellied out anyway, but you don't want to um, hammer this flat anymore. There's too much material bulged out. And all you're gonna do is end up cracking this even worse and make this really, really disjointed. Um, if it was a thicker piece maybe, but it's pretty thin. Now you can kind of see, there's like the inside tin, but you can see, um, and here's another, there's another place. So we actually have to do a full patch right along this base to cover both of these total cracks. And I don't know if you can see, but it is incredibly thin copper. Like, I don't even know if it'll let you. It is, it's, it's, I would say like about as, um, it's about as thick in this spot as a piece of paper. It's super thin. So next we're going to cut a patch um, and I'm actually gonna do one bigger than this space. It's probably gonna be a full like circle like this. And then we actually have to clean this surface really, really well to get the tin to adhere um, after we tin the patch and everything. Okay, we're gonna move on. Here's a piece of copper. And actually I'm gonna kind of eyeball it because um, I wanna make it round, but also um, sort of, um, oval in shape. Um, I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna like, so we're gonna start with oval and then we can move, move to circle. Um, what you're gonna do once you cut out your piece um, and fit it will be to clean also your patch before you uh, 
before you do anything next to it. You don't want any oxidation on your patch. I would love to use a thicker copper, but one, it'll weight down the pot actually in a weird disjointed way. Um, and two, um, I wanna be able to have as much control over forming this patch to the current kind of curve of the, of the base. And I won't be able to do that with a thicker copper as easily. Um, and then there'll be a, a less of a, like a step to the patch. I want it to be as smooth as possible on the base. once we get solder on it. So, I think we are gonna end up with a rounder piece. So, as you can see, it's super trial and error, and I'm kind of eyeballing my patch. I'm not creating it perfectly symmetrical with uh, any tool you could, but, um, but I really wanna custom fit it around these tricky spots. Yep, we're gonna go, I think we're gonna go more round. Um, all right, next. All right, it's as good as she gets. Next, we'll clean this piece. And then remember, if you go in the, there's a video I have called Tinning in the Flat. I'm gonna do that to this piece real quick. Um, so what you do, and I'll, I'll show you in brief, but if you want a longer Tinning in the Flat, there's another video I have. Um, but that's what we're gonna do after we clean this, is we're gonna prep this uh, surface that's gonna go on here with surface of the really thin brittle pot to take this patch. So the things that I like to use ideally are the are finer um, uh, like 800 so you're not taking off hardly any copper 800 um, sandpaper. Ideally you wouldn't have to go much more than that but you really need the surface to be completely clean and all copper without any black oxidation in order to take this patch. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so here's our patch. Now, if you see, I have not gone into the actual grooves um, of where the damage is. And that's for a main reason is the more I do that, the bigger the holes get, the more brittle this gets, the more problems it is. And frankly, this doesn't need to be clean. The outside surface and everywhere else where the patch is gonna be touching needs to be. The inside, as you know, is, is essentially pretty darn fixed. <sighs> and I'll be able to go back in again once I do this, because there'll be a discoloration on that base tin. But anyway, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is kind of, you know, make sure that it fits and it's pressed down, but it's gonna be really finicky now because we're gonna flux this whole thing and we're gonna flux this whole area. And then we're gonna inch by inch get it to attach and you're gonna wanna stop often because what's gonna happen is, as I like tin here, then I'm gonna want it cool before I go over here, and before I go over here, and before I go over here, because we're blind soldering this patch on, but if you do it all at once, it's just gonna keep like popping off back and forth. So next we're gonna use the blowtorch and we're gonna hope that we can get it to stick. Um, and I'm also going to use, not this, um, you're gonna want to use something to like hold it down. So like you're gonna want to use like something like this to give you, you know, leverage 
you know, to push as you heat. So. There's still a couple of spaces I would like to tack down further before I do the next step. So what I'm gonna do is I have this wet cotton and I'm gonna put it right over here on this side of the patch. So the half the patch is there and the other half the patch is here. And this is a trick Bob taught me with doing blind soldering like this, but essentially that'll pull off the heat so I can tack down a couple of these extra spots right here that I wanna get down. Um, and, then, uh, and then we'll go and we'll do some uh, kind of finessing and we should be done, I think. Oh my gosh. Okay, now that the patch is down, it looks good. However, um, I don't like leaving raw edges like that because food can still get underneath um, even though it is patched all the way around and there's tin and everything like that. I'm gonna do a very fine layer of exterior tin and then I'll actually sand off a bunch of it so that it blends in, but that'll also create less of a steep, like step where this patches it'll make it a more gradual hill so next we're going to just flex the outside and prepare this and as always because it's copper it's going to pull it off so we are going to have to use um we are going to have to use the whatchamacallit. Actually, this is way more than I need. We're going to use the fire just to keep it hot because otherwise it won't take. But try and do this so you can see it. Come on. So there, there's just one bit and I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing and it looks sloppy, but it'll all curl around and it's gonna take away that step and then it'll be nice and smooth. Okay, I have the patch on the outside also done. So now it's sealed on the inside and now we're gonna like smooth out the outside. Um, it should all be now totally food safe because um, it's such a weird shape. I wanted to like put this nasty solder, but now we actually have to file it down um, like this. So I'm gonna use the Dremel and uh, trying to get it pretty. Okay, patch is on. It's not perfect, um, but what I love is that, and I know you can't tell, but it's smooth. Like there's no like catch. It's just one continuous line because of the contouring so that it, like fits it without there being like this huge shelf. Um, so next will be obviously to polish this up. The owner of this pot will not be able to cook in high heats and obviously we'll have to take great care with it. But the good news is it's at least usable. Um, so my next thing will be to polish and send this off. And um, as always, if you have any questions, um, comments, ideas, how you would do this, please share. This has kind of been a really fun place to learn for myself and everybody else. So um, I love finding other ways that other people would have done this. Um, anyway, um, if you could, if you want to um, follow me on, if you could, if you want to follow me on Facebook um, at House Copper and Cookware or at House Copper um, on Instagram, you can find Copper Iron and Clay wherever books are sold. Um, I have my podcast and everything else on housecopper.com. And 
I will not forget this time to put the flux and tin and everything that I used on this since um, people ask that question and I have them on all my other videos, but then you have to go search for it. So this way it'll hopefully still be in one spot. Um, anyway, all right, there we have it. Thank you again for watching and I will see you next time.